Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Good News Internet Broadcasting. My name is Bobby Wibowo. I'm one of the English ministry pastors at Sarang Nanum Community Church, and I welcome you to this evening's program. But before we go any further, let's pray together in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, we thank you for another opportunity for us to learn about your words. But not only for us to learn, Father, we wish to learn and to be able to apply it in our lives. Speak to us, God. This evening, we lift up our hands, God, and surrender to you, O Lord, our lives, our future, our present, things that we don't know, but the outcome, what it will be, things in the future that perhaps, Lord, are out of our control or things that are going on right now that are out of our control. We lift everything into your name, Jesus. And we know, Father, that you care for us. You'll never leave us. You'll never forsake us. In Jesus' name, God's people say, Amen. I'm very happy to be able to share with you the word of the Lord this evening, and it's going to be taken from the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. I'd like to read it, and please follow along with me. 1 Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. For you yourselves know, brothers, that our coming to you was not in vain, but though we had already suffered and had and been shamefully treated at Philippi, as you know, we had boldness in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in the midst of much conflict. For our appeal does not spring from error of, or impurity or any attempt to deceive. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we speak, not to please man, but to please God, who tests our hearts. For we never came with words of flattery, as you know, nor with a pretext for greed. God is witness, nor did we seek glory from people, whether from you or from others. Though we could have made demands as apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you, like a nursing mother taking care of her own children. So, being affectionately desirous of you, we were ready to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you had become very dear to us. For you remember, brothers, our labor and toil. We work night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how holy and righteousness and blameless was our conduct toward you, believers. For you know how, like a father with his children, we have, we exhorted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. Amen. Isn't it amazing we've been caught into God's kingdom and glory? Such an honor that is way beyond any honor that can be given by a human being in this earth. The amazing thing is, is that God loves us so much and he first loved us. That is why we love God. That is why we love other people, because of the abundance of love that we have, the forgiveness that was given to us. And it's true that the life of a Christian, it's a life of full of process. It's a life that is not just a straight line of, of smooth sailing with no problems. It's not true. Jesus said in the book of John chapter 16, verse 33, that in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In the book of Thessalonians here, we learn that the people in the city of Thessalonica, whom Paul had written this letter to, once they were worshipers of idols. But after hearing the gospel, the good news, they received it, they believed it, they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, and they changed themselves. They accepted the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And it is said that in this letter, that their lives are really examples for others. In here we learn that the people had learned a lot from Paul because Paul had treated them 
like his own children. Not just Paul. Paul did not minister alone. In the beginning of this letter, it is said that the letter was from Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy. Especially Timothy. He was like a son to Paul. Paul considered Timothy his own son. And that really is teaching us right now that for us who are blessed, who maybe are more mature than others, we are to take others under our wing. Those who are willing to learn, those who are willing to grow, we should definitely help and support. In this story also, we learned that Paul, along with his companions who are working to preach the gospel, they did not want to be a burden. And how did they um, do it to avoid being a burden for others? They worked. They were not lazy people who were just oh, spending the day and just relaxing, doing nothing, but they were active. Paul had an occupation as a tent maker, and they made tents. Back in the days, long, long ago, many people lived in tents. And basically, we could say that probably what, in today's words, he was like a contractor, right? He was like a contractor. And Paul, really made his life an example for others to see so that when others sees him, he is not a stumbling block. That when others sees him, they can say, wow, I would like to be like Apostle Paul, who is in the ministry, but is also not neglecting his responsibilities in this world. And Paul, really, he could have made demands for the people to give and give and give to him but instead, he was the one who gave and gave and gave to others. And to us today, we are taught to serve with a sincere heart. And that is the title of today's sermon. To serve with a sincere heart. Serve who? Serve the Lord. And when we serve the Lord, we definitely will serve his people as well, his children. Because Jesus said the first and the greatest commandment is to love the Lord our God with all of our heart and soul and our mind and our strength as well in other translations it says that but to for us to then love our neighbors as we love ourselves isn't it amazing that one paul is teaching the people here to really have a sincere heart sincere motivation in serving serving the lord and serving others as well and the people in thessalonica they were basically the congregant members of the church. And Paul wanted to make sure that they stay away, stare away from things that would defile them, relationships that would corrupt them, thoughts, actions that might make them stumble. In one of his letters in the book of Corinthians, Paul said, flee from sexual immorality. Flee, not to fight it, but to flee from it. And things that could really defile a person, really, Paul said that it's things that, are come, things that comes out of them. And what can come out of us? Our actions, our words. So we have to be careful. We have to seek and search our hearts and make sure that the things that we are doing are pleasing to the Lord. When we love God with all our heart, our soul, and our mind, it means we are giving our all to God. And not to stop there, but once we are living right, Paul wants to make sure that his people, and we know that Paul is writing this letter by the inspiration from the Holy Spirit. Paul wants to make sure that the people will, will give a positive impact to the city of Thessalonica. And that they would be servants of the Lord who are serving with a sincere heart. Not serving with an with a ulterior motive. Perhaps, yeah, I want to serve so that I can get something out of the church. But no, serving so that I can give to others. I can give the best. I want to serve because God has given the best to me. And that is why I would like to give the best to God, to His work, and His people as well. Words of flattery, right? Paul talks about that. And when we flatter people, sometimes those words are not quite sincere words. When people flatter us, 
that sometimes that word has a negative connotation to it because when you flatter someone, it seems like you want to say something nice to that person or something nice about that person in order so we can get something out of them. But we learned that as in the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 7, it says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. So a person can say one thing, very nice to you, being very, very nice, but then that person may not really mean the words that he or she says. And that is why oftentimes we hear people say, oh, wow, I was stabbed in the back. Being stabbed in the back is really unpleasant. It's tough. It's tough and it's tough and it's hard. However, we learn that at least we can be sure that we don't stab people in the back. At least we can be sure that we sow good things to other people. And if we don't have ulterior motive, or in, as it is written in verse 5, nor with a pretext for greed. It means that when we serve other people, we're not doing it in order so that perhaps that person can then repay us for it. I mean, of course, when someone does something nice to you and you repay them with good, that's, that's great, but that shouldn't be our motivation, such as saying, oh, I'm gonna help this person out, but he better make sure next time around he should pay me double. So that's not what God wants us to be. God wants us to be sincere. And when we are sincere, sometimes we would say things to people that maybe it might hurt them for a moment, but it is for their good. In my life, a few times I have had situations where I really have to confront or I have to say things that um, perhaps were quite hurtful to another person. But the difference is I don't say it with a motive to hurt them or to discourage them or to cast them down. But I say it in order to correct them so that they can in turn be better do something better with their life, make themselves uh, right before God to make the right decisions as well. And in the book of Proverbs chapter 27, verse six, it says, faithful are the wounds of a friend, profuse are the kisses of an enemy. Sometimes when people are straight up um, there, they say something straight up to you, it might be, wow, that's so hurtful. But sometimes that's even better than someone who would be so kind, saying always yes to all the things that you're saying, but behind you, they're not the same person. But we want to learn to be that kind of person, to not be afraid to correct someone when they're wrong, to correct someone out of love, not out of hate. And lastly, it's one of the most important things, which is to not seek praises from other people. In verse 6, it says, Nor did we seek glory from people, whether from you or from others, though we could have made demands as apostles of Christ. The amazing thing is this. Jesus in the book of John, chapter 5, verse 41, says that I do not seek glory from people. That one verse is very short but yet very powerful in the same time. Jesus said that I do not receive glory from people because he wants to teach us that in our lives, we are not to seek glory from people. We are not to seek the approval of human beings. The most important approval is one that we already have. That is from God. Romans chapter 14, verse 17 says that the kingdom of God is not about eating or drinking, but it is about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Righteousness, peace, and joy. When we are righteous, when we live right, upright, when we don't lie and we don't cheat, then our words are straight as an arrow, then our lives will have peace and our lives will have joy. If you're thinking, why is my life um, so full of um, things that are unsettling, no peace, no joy, maybe you can search again. How have your actions been lately? Or how has it been throughout your life? Have you 
been crooked in your ways or have you been straight in your ways? But you might say, well, if you were always straight, then we get nothing. We don't get a profit. Well, you know what? Always know that the, full, the, the earth and the fullness thereof, as the Bible says, belongs to the Lord our God. It'll be very easy for God to bless you, to make you reap where you did not sow. The book of Micah, chapter 6, verse 8, tells us that he has told you, O man, or in another translation, it says, O mortal, because we are mortal beings and we're not going to be in this world forever. What the Lord has required of you. He, he has told you, O man, what is good, right? And what are the three things that are written? To do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. When we are doing things justly, it means we are righteous. A person who is just is a person who is righteous. Is true to his words. A person who keeps his or her promises. Love mercy. When a person is merciful, that person will be able to forgive others easily. Forgive others who have done something wrong to them. And to be able to move on with their lives. And have a happier life. A blessed life. When we forgive someone, it doesn't mean like we have to hang out with them, spend time with them 24-7, but it means we no longer hold any hatred towards them. And to walk humbly with your God. The book of Proverbs says that before a fall, a man's heart is haughty or arrogant, right? That humility precedes honor, but arrogance or haughtiness, that is what precedes a fall. If you want to make sure that God will lift us up and honor us, what shall we do? We shall then be humble. Jesus was humble. So must we be humble. I'm going to close with this. I'm going to close with the story from the book of Matthew chapter 7 verses 1 to 27, which you could read at home on your own, the full chapter, and especially those verses that I just mentioned. Jesus said, in those days, or that will be in the last days, or the day of judgment that is, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not perform mighty deeds in your name, cast out demons, right? Perform miracles, even in the book of Matthew chapter 7, it says that. But Jesus will say, I don't know you, you workers of lawlessness. And the thing is, when we think about these, things, these three things, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons, and perform or do mighty works, that really is talking about us who are ministers of the gospel. And we have to check and recheck ourselves. Have we been doing the will of the Lord? We're not here to point fingers, but we are here to search ourselves so that we want to make sure throughout our ministry, our life in this world, that we are doing right before God. That we would build our house on a rock. And the person who builds his house on a rock is a person who hears the word of the Lord and puts them into action. And that person, when the wind, the flood, and the rain come, their house will not fall. Their house is their life. And the rock is Jesus, the foundation. And of course, as I had shared last time in the previous sermon, that in the book of Matthew chapter 13, it also tells us about the weeds and the tares, or the, the weeds and the weeds, W-E-E-D-S, that the Lord does not plug out the weeds until the end of age. And then he will burn the weeds. The Lord will let the weeds grow with the weeds together till the end of age. Because if the weeds were to be plucked out before the harvest, the weeds the good, from the good seeds might be plucked out as well. So they'll grow together till the end. So don't be surprised if in the church or in a place of ministry you see people that you feel like wow how could they do that to me or how could they do such a thing yes if we can correct them if we can give them inputs we will and we must but never forget 
for us to introspect ourselves as well. Look into our hearts and be sure and make sure that we are doing right before God. We live our lives right before the Lord. Be a blessing so that our lives will be a life that can be an example to others. That when we serve faithfully, our lives will be a salt and a light for others to see. Then when they see us, they see the love of Jesus. And through our lives, many people will come and know the Lord. And through our lives as well, many people can say, that is such an example. He or she is such an example. I would like to be like him or her. And we know that all of that can happen with a relationship with Jesus Christ. And if any of you have been a Christian for a long time, and, but have, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, or you feel that the definition of a Christian is a churchgoer, let's make sure this evening that you open your heart, allow Jesus to come into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Would you pray this prayer with me if you've never prayed the salvation prayer? If you don't know where you'll spend eternity, pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and my life. I repent of my sins. Forgive me, God. Lord, today I know I've been born again. I believe, O oh Lord, that you died and you rose again. I believe you, Lord. You are my Lord and Savior. Amen. In this moment, Lord, I would like to pray for everyone else. Lord, if there are any of us who are listening this evening and any of us, Lord, are sick, I pray for healing in Jesus' name. If anyone is discouraged, encourage them, O Father. If anyone is in need of help, help them out, O Lord God. And if anyone here, Lord, are brokenhearted, may you mend their hearts together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Bless us. Strengthen us so that all that we do will glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Until next time.